Okay, guys. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about iron physiology, all its absorption, its storage, its transport, its metab overall metabolism, and then uh, how it is obtained from one outright blood cells by the macrophages in the blood, and then again made available for the synthesis of new red blood cells. Iron is a very important element in the body. Uh, usually, uh, it's in the iron in the ferrous state present inside. The hemo inside the red blood cells RBCs in the form of hemoglobin and most of the body's iron is approximately 60% of the body's iron is present in the hemoglobin this is the most uh, abundant form of hemoglobin found uh, abundant form of iron found in the uh, blood in the red blood cells okay uh, let's get started okay iron absorption how is it absorbed it's basically liver uh, secretes okay now I've uh, listed the mechanism through which the iron uh, is absorbed by the body okay first of all this liver the liver of a person it secretes small quantity of beta globulin called apotransferrin it is a protein a beta globulin well globulins are plasma proteins uh, globulins and the type of globulins uh, is a beta globulin that is called apotransferrin uh, in the bile okay it is uh, apotransferrin is secreted by the liver in bile that flows through the bile duct into the duodenum okay here in the duodenum which is a part of the small intestine it uh, binds with the free iron and also some iron compounds in the food example the hemoglobin which is present from uh, diet uh, which is obtained from diet hemoglobin and myoglobin are the iron compounds the most important source of iron in diet dietary iron and free iron can also be uh, present in the diet so this apotransferring it goes and binds to the free iron and the iron compounds and after binding it forms a special transport protein called transferrin okay this apotransferrin is then forms this transferrin protein uh, which is your transport protein for the iron which in turn binds to receptors in the intestinal walls okay intestinal mucosa we have special receptors for the transferrin and once the receptor binding to the transferrin occurs through endocytosis, to be more specific, through pinocytosis, this transferrin is engulfed uh, into the intestinal cells. It moves into the intestinal cells and then is released into the blood capillaries, which are beneath these cells in the form of plasma transferrin. Okay. And then uh, this is this is a quite a slow process, only a few milligrams per day, so uh, are absorbed in the blood plasma. So even if tremendous quantities of iron is present in food, only a small quantities are absorbed. Okay, just uh, let me summarize what I've written uh, right over here. Basically, iron or iron compounds in the blood, uh, hemoglobin, the liver secretes bile into the duodenum. Into the duodenum, iron and iron uh, compounds, they uh, combine with apotransferrin, which is present in the bile. This apotransferrin is a beta globulin, a beta globulin, basically a plasma protein globulin. It is a form of globulin. And this apotransferrin combines with iron to form your transferrin, uh, a uh, transport protein called uh, transferrin. This transferrin then binds to intestinal mucosa of the ileum. Okay, after uh, passing through the duodenum, it uh, reaches the ileum of the small intestine. In the ileum, these uh, apotrans, this transferrin binds to the receptors in the ileum, and then in the those receptors, after uh, binding to the receptors through endocytosis, they are taken into the cells and then released into the blood capillaries, which are right beneath these cells. Okay, and. Uh, and they form that plasma transferrin is formed basically into the blood plasma once transferrin enters the blood plasma plasma transferrin is formed okay a very slow process indeed okay so if even if the diet contains tremendous quantities of iron only a very small only very small quantities are absorbed okay the rest of them they just pass out uh, the intestinal tract okay then body's total iron is regulated by controlling the this rate of absorption okay the iron the way it is absorbed so the total iron in the body is uh, regulated by regulating this rate at which the iron is absorbed from the intestines so if the iron stores in the body become saturated that is you don't have enough uh, space to store all the iron that is available so the rate of absorption slows down okay and uh, if 
the stores are depleted if the stores start uh, running out from iron then this rate of absorption slightly increases okay so this is how absorption occurs and the mechanism is important okay iron in the ferrous uh, form it combines with apotransferrin that comes in the bile from the liver then this apotransferrin combines with the iron and then after binding to the iron it forms transferrin and then this transferrin to the through pinocytosis or through endocytosis and reaches the blood capillaries where it forms the plasma transferrin molecule and this process this entire rate of absorption can be can be regulated to control the rate of absorption of iron okay uh, it is regulate that body's total iron is regulated by controlling this rate of absorption of iron okay and we've talked about that now the next thing that we need to do is the transport of this absorbed iron okay we've done the absorption of iron okay iron has been absorbed into the blood now what happens uh, after absorption of iron well iron is absorbed right uh, it immediately combines okay the uncombined form of iron the free form of iron it immediately combines with the beta globulin already some of the beta globulin is also already since we know that globulins are plasma proteins and beta globulins are present in the plasma as well so iron which comes which reaches the uh, the blood they combine with beta globulin to form the beta globulin which type of beta globulin the apotransferrin basically to form your transferrin molecule which is your uh, transport protein for the iron transport this binding is quite loose so uh, this is actually a loose binding okay the iron combines with its apotransferrin quite loosely so that it can easily be released to any tissues of the body at any point okay now this transferrin can also bind to receptors on the cell membranes of erythrocytes okay now what happens uh, after the transport okay storage and utilization of uh, the uh, this iron basically now this transferrin which is once formed it binds it can bind to the uh, this transferrin once formed it can bind to the receptors on the cell membranes of erythrocytes cell membranes of red blood cells uh, we've done a lot of red blood cells in the previous lectures as well i've given the link of the previous lecture in the description do check that out okay so transferrin can bind to the receptors on the cell membranes of the erythrocytes and so they can enter the erythrocytes by endocytosis and transport the iron which they contain the transferrin as i told you is a transport protein for iron it, it is loaded with iron so once it uh, binds to the endocyte to the receptor membranes, uh, so receptors of the cell membrane of erythrocytes, it can enter the erythrocyte through endocytosis and transport the iron they carry to the mitochondria of the maturing red blood cells. Okay, and as I told you in the previous lectures, that the mitochondria of the maturing, the developing red blood cells, is responsible for the synthesis of the heme groups. Okay, the synthesis of the heme groups, uh, heme groups are made in the mitochondria of these maturing red blood cells. And once this iron is transported, iron. Iron is transported into the mitochondria, there the heme group synthesis begins and hemoglobin, new hemoglobin is made. We've made an entire lecture on hemoglobin in the last video as well. Okay, now, the third uh, point is that it's excess iron, excess iron. This was about the utilization of iron at one point in the synthesis of heme group. Now, the, what happens to excess iron? Excess iron is stored in the storage pools of the liver, hepatocytes. Uh, mainly to some extent in the radiculo endothelial cells of the bone marrow. These are some special types of bone marrow uh, cells uh, which are present in the bone marrow, which are also responsible for the absorption of iron, uh, for the storage of iron basically. But the major uh, s uh, place where the iron is stored are the liver parenchyma, the liver hepatocytes. Okay, this is where the iron, excess iron is stored. So this point is very high yield. You guys should know this. Then moving forward, on entering the storage cells, it combines mainly with a protein called the apo, uh, apoferritin. Okay, this is apoferritin, not apotransferrin, okay? These are two different terms. Apotransferrin was present in the blood plasma and apoferritin is present inside the cell, in the cell cytoplasm, okay? And now this apoferritin, this is actual storage pool. This is a storage pool of the iron. So now once the iron has been delivered inside the cells, it combines with this apoferritin protein to form the storage form of the called ferritin. Okay, and the iron which is present inside this ferritin, this storage protein, is called storage iron. Okay, inside the parenchyma of the liver. 
Small quantities of iron, okay, are also stored in extremely insoluble form called hemosiderin. Uh, hemosiderin is basically, uh, they are small globules or small uh, dots which are also visible under the light, light microscope as well. Some, uh, especially when the total quantity of iron in the body is more than the apoferritin storage pool can accommodate. So if you have uh, more, you've uh, most of the iron has been uh, uh, absorbed from the small intestine and a lot of iron is now present and has been delivered to the liver parenchyma and after delivering uh, delivery to the liver uh, hepatocytes what happens is that uh, the uh, hemosiderin uh, sorry not the hemosiderin the apoferritin pools the apoferritin storage pool or the uh, ferritin storage pool they get saturated and no more iron uh, can be accumulated so then in the saturated form what happens is that some extremely insoluble form of irons are formed and they are then start uh, super saturating that place and they start forming uh, hemosiderin molecules which are the extremely insoluble form of liver which are present which are formed when the total quantity of iron uh, becomes more than the apoferritin storage pool can accommodate. So this was all about the transport and the storage of iron. Okay, so it is mainly transported in the form of uh, transferrin molecule and then this transferrin has a few roles. It can bind to the receptors on the cell membrane of erythrocyte and it can transport the iron to the mitochondria inside the erythrocyte, uh, in the, inside the uh, maturing erythrocytes to form the heme group. This is one function of transferrin. Then the second function, uh, the second way in which iron is stored is that uh, excess iron is stored in the liver uh, parenchyma, liver hepatocytes mainly, and to some extent in these cells, the reticuloendothelial cells of the bone marrow, and then on entering the storage cells, basically the mainly the liver cells, uh, uh, the this, uh, the iron combines with a protein called apoferritin, the apoferritin storage pools to form the storage form of iron, uh, the ferritin, which is your storage iron and the excess quantity of iron, which cannot be accommodated in the apoferritin storage pool. It appears as hemosiderin, which are extremely insoluble forms of iron that appear uh, in the light microscope as well. Okay. And now of uh, an important fact that I've, lived, I've uh, given over here that man loses uh, basically males or man can lose loses approximately 0 0.8 grams of iron daily through the feces. OK, and but the women, they have additional blood losses as well. The menstrual cycle, the menstrual losses. And due to that, an average blood loss of 1.3 grams per day. So women lose more iron per day than males. So they need uh, to supplement that uh, by taking iron supplements. Uh, okay. So this was the transport and storage of iron. Okay. So the first thing was absorption. Now we've done the transport and storage. Okay. The third, let's talk generally about the iron metabolism as well. Okay. Iron, uh, we've been talking about the iron metabolism since the beginning though. Iron is essential for hemoglobin synthesis, myoglobin synthesis, cytochrome, Okay, hemoglobin is a pigmented protein, which we've talked about in the previous lecture. A uh, link is given in the description. Do check that out for on hemoglobin uh, for the previous lecture. Then myoglobin is again a, a protein just like hemoglobin, but it is uh, not actually used to transport oxygen, but rather it is used to store oxygen. Okay, and it is mainly present in the uh, in the muscle. It has a much higher affinity for oxygen than hemoglobin. Then cytochrome. Cytochrome are basically uh, proteins, which are membrane proteins uh, present in the respiratory complex of mitochondria in the electron transport chain. So they help in the electron transport chain and ATP synthesis. Cytochrome oxidase is basically an enzyme that acts in combination with the cytochrome. It helps to oxidize the cytochrome and remove the electron from it during the electron transport chain. We'll talk about that in biochemistry. Okay, peroxidase is, a, is an enzyme that causes the uh, formation and breakdown of uh, hydrogen peroxide in the lysosomes, I guess. Yeah, in the lysosomes, the per peroxidase. And then, so... Anyways, it's just an enzyme. Again, it synthesizes uh, iron is essential in it. Then catalase is an enzyme as well. Uh, okay, etc. Now, the total quantity of iron ranges from 4 to 5 grams on average. Okay, uh, the total quantity of iron ranges from 4, 4 to 5 grams on average. And then we have approximately 65% of that quantity in the form of hemoglobin. Okay, our body contains 4 to 5 grams of iron in total. Okay, and out of that, 
we have approximately 65% of that quantity in the form of hemoglobin. Okay, hemoglobin in the blood. 4% is myoglobin, 0.1% is the pl in plasma. It is combined with transport protein called transferrin. We've talked about that in the previous, uh, just a few minutes ago. And then 15 to 30% of the total iron is stored in the reticular endothelial and liver parenchyma. Uh, liver parenchyma is where the major portion is stored in, and to some extent in the reticular endothelial cells and for later use in the form of ferritin. Okay, in the form of ferritin, this ferritin is actually the form in which the liver stores the iron. Okay, this is actually the storage iron form of the liver. Then, okay, the last part. Okay, now the red blood cells which uh, have become worn out after their 120-day uh, uh, lifespan has been completed and they become worn out or they become fragile. So what happens is that they are destroyed. After the red blood cells, and as we've talked about uh, them, that red blood cells contain approximately 60% of the body's hemoglobin in the form of, the, of the body's uh, iron in the form of hemoglobin. So now this hemoglobin cannot be wasted and this iron cannot be wasted and needs to be recovered. Okay, so the mechanism by which it is recovered, let's discuss that. After the uh, RBCs complete their lifespan of approximately 120 days, they burst by passing through the tight red pulp of the spleen, okay? Uh, this is, uh, spleen is also called the graveyard of RBCs. Basically, they contain a tight junction, a tight uh, point from which the RBCs have to skew, squeeze their way through. And so since after 120 days, they have lost their flexibility and they've become very fragile. So after passing through the red, uh, while passing through the red pulp of the spleen, they burst. And on bursting, what happens is that uh, it results in the rupture of the fragile RBCs. Okay, on bursting, the hemoglobin is released and this hemoglobin, which is released, now this is important and it needs to be recovered. The iron in this hemoglobin needs to be recovered for the body. The body cannot afford to waste this iron. Okay, so what happens is that it is released and now this hemoglobin is phagocytized by the macrophages of the body, okay, and mainly by the Kupffer cells. Kupffer cells are basically the macrophages which are found in the liver, okay, and the macrophages of the spleen and the macrophages of the bone marrow. These are the three major macrophages that cause the uh, phagocytosis of hemoglobin. Okay, once they are phagocytized, there are hemoglobin, mainly the liver uh, macrophages called the Kupffer cells. The iron is rapidly absorbed. The iron of the hemoglobin is rapidly absorbed over a few hours to days. And uh, over a few hours and days, this iron, which is absorbed by these uh, macrophages, it is then slowly released back into the blood, where it combines with the apotransferrin. Again, apotransferrin, the beta globulin, the transport protein, apotransferrin to form the transferrin, the major transport protein, and then it's transported back to the liver for storage in the apoferritin storage pools. And we've talked about the apoferritin, we've talked about the apotransferrin, both of them, and we've talked about the transferrin. And after combining with apoferritin, uh, what happens is that they form the ferritin storage pool and the hemocytin uh, storage pool, we talked about that as well. Okay, and other than this, they can also be transported to the bone marrow. Okay, why is it important to transport to the bone marrow? Because new red blood cells have to be made, right? So the, for the new red blood cells that are being made, the hemoglobin uh, formation, hemoglobin synthesis requires the iron in the, from the worn out red blood cells. The tetrapyrrol ring, okay, this is what we've talked about in the lecture on hemoglobin that the tetrapyrrol ring or the porphyrin ring is uh, also present in the heme group. The tetrapyrrole ring or the porphyrin ring in combination with the ferrous ion uh, forms the heme group, right? So now the tetrapyrrole ring is converted by a series of steps, okay, by these macrophages into bile pigments, okay, bile pigment called bilirubin. This bilirubin which is uh, made is then stored in the gallbladder for some time and then after that, that it is later released into the duodenum through the bile duct. Okay, and then in the duodenum, it does its function of, of fatty acid emulsification and other function. It has many other functions, but uh, this is what, uh, how the iron is recovered from worn out red blood cells. Okay, so that's it for iron metabolism. And in the next lecture, we are going to uh, talk about a few disorders of blood. Yeah, this is anemias and polycythemia in the next lecture. I'll make sure to give the link in the description of this lecture as well. So do check that out as well. Thank you so much.